So we are here for our coffee chat and we do get carried away. There's so much energetically, planetary wise, spiritually wise happening at the moment, but most importantly for all of us at an individual level. So we're back for our weekly coffee chat with the lovely Bryce from Esoteric Atlanta. How are you doing, Bryce? I'm good. I'm really good. How are you? I'm great. I feel like every single day, helped by a lot of the conversations we have and with some of our other mutual friends, that I'm just getting so much clarity. I loved our chat yesterday that's on both our channels with Sean Stone. I think he has got some amazing wisdom in so many different areas to share. But I really feel that there's a lot of clarity. We talk about the veil lifting, and, and that means so many different things to different people. Um, but today we wanted to talk about junk conspiracy, didn't we? And yes. the implications of that. Yeah. Um, so take it away. What does junk conspiracy mean to you? Because it's a big topic, isn't it? Yeah. So this is something that people who have been in the you know truth or community for decades now will warn you about. And it's the idea of junk conspiracy. And it's put out there intentionally by the bad guys to make us look like idiots. And so, because when we talk about things, you know, that are against the official narrative, I'll have to be careful about what you guys know we're talking about. And then we say something else that's junk conspiracy, it all gets thrown out, right? We look like idiots. And so I, I've been seeing this lately. And I think, I think, um, you know, for us that are awake, for lack of a better word, we're, we're also emotionally ready to be vindicated, to have like our, our whole pain that we've been through, the, the isolation, the ostracization, that we cling to every single thing that's put out there. And we can't do that. We have to have discernment. Yeah. And speaking of Sean Stone, if y'all watch his, uh, his docu-series, he talks about the idea of consciousness and how we know that our thoughts radiate a vibration. And we have these three car different karmas. We have our own person, which is just our, your work. It's things you're working through, right? That's it's not, it's not something crazy scary that people in the West think it is. Karma is just cause and effect. That's all it is. You yeah. have your own personal karma that you've developed in this life, your work in this life, and possibly past lives if you believe in that. And you have your ancestral karma that you've inherited to work through. And you have a collective karma. And boy, Lord have mercy, have we walked into a timeline where there's a huge collective karma karma now the other side of this polarity knows this and so and sean stone does a really good job talking about the movies how they're controlling your consciousness in order to make things happen to create certain timelines and so the thing that's been very very concerning for me with the junk conspiracy is that's what's happening there's a famous quote that goes whoever controls the past controls the future Whoever controls the present controls the past. Absolutely. And we have to, and I've been on Twitter a lot talking about, because I am doing a deep dive into Tartaria for, there was a lot of signaling in the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games that I was at, I was there as a child. And so it kind of forced me to look into all this Tartaria stuff. And you guys, it changes our whole history. And I think people are so desperate now with like the past lives thing that they're going, to, our body is made of 80% water. Let's just put it this way. Okay. And so if you guys know the tarot cards, the, the cups are emotions, water represents emotions. And so if we're, if we're mostly water, then we're living in a very high emotional density. And the other side knows that they can play with these emotions in order to create a certain narrative. And so that is my concern with the junk conspiracy. I want people to be very, very careful about what they're buying into. We mm -hmm. know that within um, a war, there's always going to be people who you think are white hats or truthers or good guys that are actually bad guys and bad guys who are actually good guys. And so we need to start practicing discernment because if they have it their way, they're going to change the whole narrative of our history and get you emotionally invested in that to then change the outcome of the future, which is not the outcome that we want. We don't want their outcome, but they're trying to do that by manipulating the past in order to change the trajectory of the future. And so that is my concern. That's what I just want people, you guys all watching, you're super smart. I mean, look what you yeah. lived through. You've lived through one of the craziest, you know, things. I was about to say the, uh, a word we can't say on YouTube, but you've lived through a crazy timeline and you've gotten this far. You're smart. 
you're awake, you see things. So just remember that just because somebody's pulling on your emotions doesn't mean it's real. They know what they're doing. Have this. That's perfectly explained. And I wanted to add to that from a pers- personal perspective as well. Bryce and I, you and I talk all the time about friction, about how those challenges are the things that really grow you up to the next level. And at the moment, we are, anyone who's watching these channels is really growing at a cellular DNA upgrade level, at a spiritual level, at a physical level. And I think that one of the beauties that we've all got are those people in our lives that do feel differently to us. Mm-hmm that do think that all conspiracies are mad. So the thing is, when you're looking at the junk conspiracy, both sides of the argument can be too far over and probably where we've got to all meet is somewhere in the middle. So not everything that, say, perhaps we've been, uh, as a community, talking about over the last few years is true. And we're going to see a very good example of that when we speak to Jamie Soleil, in a minute which is our next interview and Bryce has already had a brilliant interview with her which is on her channel we're going to bring up some important bits in there similarly not everything we know for a fact that most of what we're told from mainstream whether it's media whether it's education um whether it's uh the the medical profession whatever it is we know that's not true but it's never a black and white it's never they're all right and they're all wrong the truth is always somewhere in the middle normally. And I think this is where I think it's really wonderful is for people now, we've all been through this sort of emotional highs and lows. And now people are really starting to tune in and have the courage just because everyone else likes someone doesn't mean that you have to. If you've got that niggling feeling, be strong and stick to it because both of us have learned some amazing lessons on the way. And I know there's loads more still to come about all these things that are tuning in our discernment and, and really making a stand in our integrity. And of course we all make mistakes and we all learn from our mistakes, but I think it's so, so important that we appreciate the people that aren't necessarily believing parrot fashion, everything that's said yeah, that's why I stepped away from certain situations because I was at see this sort of hero worshiping of, oh, so and so said this, therefore it must be true. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. That's not necessarily the case at all. You know, it might be, it might not be. What are you feeling about that? What are you seeing? What are you noticing? Because, yes, our eyes can be deceptive. And, you know, I haven't been, even in my dreams, over to Ukraine. So I don't personally know what's happening there. But you can still use your discernment. And I think this is what is really starting to show through now and why we're seeing quite a lot of aggro at all levels, on people's personal levels, on public platforms and things. We're seeing a lot of diverging off of different ways. And all I would say to people, there's a difference between judging and questioning. Yeah. So you don't need to see something happen. Um, you know, we all we all have relationships that come and go in our lives, and we learn things from those. And sometimes there's a time to hold on to that relationship and work through issues. And sometimes it's a time you've both learned what you needed to know from that, and it's a turn to let it go. So I would sort of just say to all of us, and when Bryce and I are talking like this, we're talking as much to ourselves as other people, is just before jumping to a conclusion that this and this means that actually sit there and say, well, what's my lesson to learn? Yeah. Because the lesson we can, you and I can go through exactly the same situation, but get different lessons and need to get different lessons from it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will say in my studies of how like mind control works, or if you want to call it black magic, whatever you want to call it, it's all the same thing. You have two, two things that are constantly speaking to you. That's your brain. And that's your heart or your gut. When they do mind control, black magic, they're working on this because they can't get to this. And this can cause what we call cognitive dissonance, right? And so what I would suggest to people, regardless of which, you know, one of my favorite, I think we've talked about my favorite quotes is don't believe everything you think. Well, that we've even got Liz made us a t-shirt with that. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Liz. We love that. (laughs) Um, So if something doesn't feel right, Regardless of whether you can pinpoint it or not, listen to that because that gut, that gut reaction is something they can't touch because that's your tether to source and they can't touch that. They can only touch this. 
And so there's never been a time in my life where I've regretted listening to my intuition. Absolutely. It makes sense. So you and we want, we want someone to tell us what's going to happen. We want to know the ending of this. We're stressed out. I know, I know we all are. We're scared about the possibility of what's happening next month. I get that. But yes, settle into it. Feel, we don't have to have all the answers about everyone else. And we were going to mention that too. You know, in the law of one, it's very clear that it is not our place to t say whether somebody is good or bad or is going to be harvested or not. And we we're going to talk about this more with Jamie Soleil, like black and white thinking in, in uh, psychiatry is considered a mental disorder. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And so we put all, we place all this judgment on these people that we don't know that we don't have consent to read them, but people do it anyway. That's breaking the first law of the universe, which is free will. When you're reading someone without their permission, that is breaking a law that is a negative trait a service to self trait. Um, and then we're casting judgment on them. And that's not our place. It's not our place. Uh, we were talking about all these. If you ever see a trial, whether it's civilian court, uh, criminal court, military court, they're not calling in divinators to give evidence against these people. They're relying on car hold, uh, cold, hard facts and a jury of peers. Sean, we talked about this. John Stone are deciding what to do. It is, and so we have to be very, very careful that not only are we buying into junk conspiracy, but we're going down a path that's actually very low vibrational and is derailing your own evolution spiritually. If that and look what's happening at the moment. Let's let's take something that's in the public eye, like the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. Now, I would take a guess that virtually everyone watching this video, I don't think many people are interested in it, first and foremost. So it's just an example that comes to mind because it's in the public eye at the moment. But most people watching have probably never met either of them in person. Secondly, they're both actors. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, isn't it weird? I mean, we, we wouldn't get this in the UK. So for us, it's all bizarre because we would never have a trial shown on television. It just wouldn't be allowed. Um, so, so first of all, why are they showing all of this, digging out all the dirty laundry on television when we heard virtually nothing about the Ghislaine Maxwell trial, which is surely a lot more significant than what happened in Johnny Depp and Anja Heard's relationship or what didn't. But let's face it, there's very few people that will ever really know that truth at all. And even often the people involved don't because there's so many scientific studies that have been done to show that our memories fool us. It's so easy to make you remember a different thing for good or bad. So, you know, I'm not saying, I doubt whether there's many people watching this who are obsessed with that, but We've, we will never know. We will never yeah. know that. Even with the jury come to a decision, you know, it's probably be best at, based on who was the better actor, actress in right. the trial, who pumped most money into it. Um, and, and only those two really know what happened, you exactly. know, and, and only th those two are going to have to live with the consequences of what happened and the karma and the repercussions on all aspects of their lives, etc. So when we're seeing... I think it's really great that all these conversations are happening. To me, one of the biggest breakthroughs of the last couple of years is seeing the diversity of conversations happening between all sorts of different people that are all bringing a different perspective. So, But there's a big difference between having a discussion and projecting judgment. Yeah. Yeah. And when we talk about it too, even just in like your micro and your lives with the people in your lives who are not doing evil things, you can disagree with somebody on something and still generally like them as a person. You know? And you should be in a point where you, if you see someone that you love uh, using bad behavior or doing something that's not, you should be able to say, Hey, why are you doing that? And not have them freak out because that's, we've gotten to this place in our society. And I think they've done that on purpose to make it so polarized and so extreme and we need to go back to a place again where we're coming back into the middle, where we're coming back into this equal, harmonious balance. And um, and it starts with each individual. You know, if we're going to be participating in the collective whole, I mean, we talked about this again with Sean Stone, we have to all be responsible, as you said yesterday, for minding our own business. Mm. You know, it's not saying 
that you shouldn't watch certain people. Yeah, you can watch what you want to watch, but just have to start, even with us, even with my deep dive, mm -hmm. like have to, I can't tell you how many times I presented a research about a topic. We were just talking about this beforehand where I've spent days, if not weeks, if not years studying a certain topic and I present the research and somebody comments, well, so-and-so who's a channeler said this, so your research is wrong or whatever. No, listen to what I have to say and go do the research for yourself and don't just follow somebody else's words because you like that person. This is what got us in this mess to begin with is we stopped practicing, practicing our own discernment. We started just taking what, I, what, what somebody else said as the God, word of God. And, it's and you can know that's such a good example because, you know, most people watching this channel will, will have had their opinion shift over times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of it, you know, people that resonate with me now might not have six months ago and vice versa because I'm a different person now but so are they. But it doesn't mean I'm not appreciative from what I've learned from them on the, on the journey, good, bad, yeah. and ugly. And I think, you know, that's what you and I have talked about all the same time. It's really, really healthy to be in relationships with people of whatever that might be. It might be a casual conversation with friends. It might be a conversation with someone when you're in the, the grocery store, or it might be something more intimate ones to have people that have different opinions to you mm -hmm. because that's the only way we're all going to grow. Now, there's a big difference between abusive people trying to push their opinions on that, and we've all experienced what that feels like over the last couple of years because never before have we seen such obvious mass taking away of our individual rights or them trying to. But look how many people have managed to say no to that. Mm -hmm. So how many of that was really that big an issue anyway or how much of that issue is in our mind we've all learned so much about sovereignty over the last couple of years it's absolutely amazing and and for me that's transferred into all areas of my life and now I'm almost craving some of these other conversations and other perspectives because I know there's something I need to learn to get me on to the next step um, but that doesn't mean I need to agree with it and they certainly don't need to agree with me either um, but you know, every relationship, every interaction you're having with someone is a learning opportunity. Yeah. I mean, and I will say too, an example for me and my, with my opinion changing, and we, we've talked about this before that, you know, people typically listen to respond, not to understand. And so if we listen to understand, we can start seeing our own discernment and start seeing, uh, where our opinions can shift and change. When I first started doing deep dives on YouTube into these missing books of the Bible, into these prophecies, not just with the Bible, but the law of one, I was certain that we were at what is called the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Certain. You can go back. All those videos are still up on my channel. I haven't taken them down. You can go watch me from a year ago saying that this was the apocalypse. Then somebody said to me, Hey, I need you to watch these videos on Tartaria. This was a long time ago before I started doing a big deep dive. And th that alone shifted my opinion into, nope, we're at Gog and Magog. So that, so when we start to actually listen to what other people say, we discover more stuff that we were closed off to before. And everything we've learned from this timeline is we need to be open-minded to everything to absolutely everything in order to truly get a grasp. I mean, there really is no such thing as reality. We know that it's all just perception anyway, but to get a better grasp on our own perception of what we're living through, what our karma is, because God knows I don't want to have to repeat this again. <laughs> I want to move on next life move on <laughs> when i was just listening to something on the way of him, it just makes me laugh. You know, if we believe, and it might not be everyone's belief watching this, but if, we believe that we're here to learn lessons one we've chosen to be here in a 3d human suit so why not make the most of it and enjoy that experience because yes there's lots of lovely talks about ascension and everything but you know we've chosen to be in a human body at this time and there's a reason for that it's we like be careful what you wish for isn't it yeah we chose to come through the veil of, of amnesia we chose to and that's something too for me we've talked about this too especially when we talk about like the past life experience which i've been warning people that this is part of the these can't say that word on youtube but this is part of the uh the fake junk conspiracy because we know that they've they've given us a historical timeline that we've all learned in school we've all yeah. tested 
You know, as Jason Q says, we have our history books, they have theirs. And now overwhelming evidence is coming out that history is not what we think it is. And this modern time that we're living in this matrix only started at the end of the 1700s. Before that was the golden age, um, the thousand years of peace. And so before that, there were no um, little people being, you know, there were no warring kingdoms. It was a totally different reality. And so that's what I was talking about being aware of this, even though we don't have all the answers, just being aware that there is, there is other information that's saying what we were taught isn't real. But if they can trick you and play with your emotions and say, oh, yes, in a past life, you, you were in the, uh, you were in the crusades or you did this, then we as a collective start to uh, remember we're mostly water, start to emotionally attach to this timeline that's now going to put us in the trajectory of the future that they want, not what we want. And so yes. I, I want us to be, everybody just be aware of that. And with the past life thing, I absolutely believe in past lives. I know Catherine and I have lived together many lives at Jamie Soleil as well. You know, the minute you meet someone, you click with them. You're like, yeah, we know each other, but we've talked about this off camera too, Catherine. It's like, but we're not there. That we're not there we're not here there. now and there's a reason and, and you know so much we do, we spoke with sean yesterday about being in the present moment and you know excuse our ramblings people because we're just sort of talking out loud about you know we are here now to live the best lives possible and absolutely learning all the lessons that we've been learning from all these amazing conversations and things that have come out over the last few years and for some people for their whole lifetime you know everyone's at a different stage of their journey but making sure that you're enjoying that experience now and not feeling the guilt that there's nothing wrong with having a great time now where you are now with your circumstances in fact there's everything right with that and that doesn't mean you're going to stop learning you're going to stop evolving um, but, you know, that's one of the best ways and I, that we can con contribute. And I'd love people to sort of say in the comments below, what are you finding about this? What have you learned about junk conspiracy, about discernment? Where are you at at the moment? And, you know, what advice can you share with other people? Because we all learn from each other. I would love, Bryce, to have a chat with you. If people were interested, let us know below about the ego yeah. Um, and how the ego serves us and how it doesn't serve us, because that's a big thing coming out at the moment, astrologically, energetically. And, and it really ties in a lot to the junk conspiracy as well, doesn't it? And I'm going to add too on top of that in the comment section below. I want everybody to also, if you want to put something about your life that you love. Yes. That you love about your life. Because again, and we've said this tonight, and as a yoga teacher, this is what I would say to a student who is obsessed with past lives. I would say to them, that's great and all, what are you avoiding in this life? Mm. What is it about this life that you don't want to live through? And so you're trying to go back to the past. The past already happened. And all we need to know from past lives, in my opinion, is the emotions attached to it. Cause that's the memory. And that's what you could like for, I'll give you an example, kind of a silly example. I have an incredible fear of rats. I don't know why I have no idea. Ever since I was a child, I have been very afraid of rats and I'm assuming that there's something in the past that has to do with that. For a long time, I thought maybe I was tortured that way. I don't know, eaten by rats. And then somebody said to me, well, maybe you galactically fought like a big rat or something. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't really care what I've done the past actually like 20 years, I was in South Africa once and a rat ran across the floor and I passed out and hit the ground. It was concrete. So at that point I realized that I really needed to work on this. And so what I'm not to laugh because I love rats. That's oh, really? so I don't know why I don't know. Cause I love, you know, I love animals. Yeah, you I love love animals yeah. And and I have really taken that. I, I, I know it comes from something beyond this life. Cause there's nothing in this life that would have given me that fear. But my, for the last 20 years, really, I have put myself after that happened where I passed out in South Africa, I realized I have to figure this out because they're everywhere. And so I have put myself in situations. I've worked on my breathing, like in India, you can't escape it. They're everywhere in India. Um, and so I put myself in situations in a calm way to force myself to go into spaces where there are rats and breathe through it and calm my own nervous system down. Does this mean I'm ever going to have a pet rat? Probably not. But 
but you know, but that's, that's, that's a silly example. That's a silly example. I don't need to know what happened to cause that fear. All I need, all I'm responsible for as Bryce in this life is what I do with that fear now and how I work my way through that and how I, in a responsible way in order to fix whatever is, is causing me an, a misalignment because of whatever this animal is. It's not the rat's fault. It just triggered something in me. It's not the rat's fault. That trigger is mine to work with. That's my resistance to work with, not the rat's fault. So, so yeah, so I know it's a silly example, but we can kind of look back in our lives yeah. and see where we're afraid of certain things and realize it doesn't matter what happened. It, it's already gone. It's already passed. It doesn't matter. So funny. Uh, the reason I'm laughing is I am really, really afraid of heights. Like oh. my legs just go to jelly. I literally don't have much control over my body when I'm in a situation, say, where I'm up somewhere high and there's a sheer drop or something. Um, but funny enough, what my husband will laugh about this, when we used to go skiing, if there was a dishy Italian ski instructor that I could focus on, suddenly I could go down any run. It didn't matter how near the end. So it just shows the mind over matter. There was a cellular memory in there that was completely overridden by a really hunky Italian ski instructor. <laughs> you see little bottom um so it's a standard joke in my family you know you get me to do anything if i follow one of those any out there i'm, <laughs> I'm still quite that. scared of fights if there's none of you around i must say i but, love that that's awesome <laughs> yeah so perhaps if you have some big you know burly gorgeous person come and sit there stroking a pet rat you'll um, <laughs> get over that one but no, we, you've got to laugh in this life. You have got to laugh in this life. But for me, it's incredible because, as you say, with your breathing exercises, I use the breathing exercises, we know a lot, but also mind over matter, where your focus, this whole last few years, we've been talking so much about fear and it's so, so easy to get us back into a fear state because we're wired for it. You know, it's yeah. a very important protective mechanism that we're all wired with, every, every animal is. However... Isn't it amazing how you can override that if you've got the right tools in your toolkit? And this discernment that we're looking at is just one of those tools that will really, really help everyone override fear of whatever it is. You know, there's so many people saying, oh, I don't know what to believe. Well, don't worry about it. None of us really know what to believe. That's the thing. Yeah. And it's okay. That It's okay to not know what to believe. It's totally fine to be in a place of, I don't know. It's totally yeah. fine. You will know eventually. You will know. When the time's right, you'll know. And in the meantime, just avoid making any drastic decisions. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and make sure no one else is manipulating your energy, that you are in control of that. That is your superpower. So anyway, but yeah, oh, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. We will be back again shortly with Jamie. We would love to hear your comments below um, because it really is important. I'd love to, we'd love to hear, as Bryce said, you know, what are you really happy about at the moment? What are you really loving? Um, what have you learned about your discernment? You know, anything that you can share to sort of help, because we've all got things that have worked for us. So share them around because we're all going to move up that ladder a lot quicker then. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll be back soon. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.